One type, transpiratin cardiacamylidosis, is an underrecognized, time-dependent, infiltrative disease of the myocardium, and its prevalence increases with age. My name is Carlo Fumagalli, and I'm a fellow in training at Courage University Hospital, located in Florence, Italy. I'm going to present you the results from our latest manuscript entitled Early Diagnosis and Outcome in Patients with Wild-Type Transthyretin Cardiac Amyloidosis, which is going to be published on the August issue of the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Before reaching a diagnosis, patients visit on average three to four different physicians and specialists, thus introducing a considerable amount of time to diagnosis and potentially introducing a delay. Aim of our study was to assess the outcome of an unselected wild-type transthyretin cardiac amyloidosis population diagnosed within the last five years according to time to diagnosis. In particular, we divided our cohort of patients in those who had been diagnosed early within six months from symptom onset and compared them versus those who had been diagnosed after six months. The two groups were quite homogeneous in terms of demographic characteristics, including age and gender and principal comorbidities and clinical features as well, such as disease stage is assessed by creatinine levels and levels of NT pro BMP. Long-term, as you can see, patients who had been diagnosed within six months from their symptom onset had a more favorable outcome with up to 30% lower mortality, irrespective of age, coronary artery disease, heart failure symptoms, disease stage, and also ejection fraction, suggesting that timing, especially diagnostic timing, can be a critical issue for the care of patients with this disease. So how does this finding relate to clinical practice? Given that the majority of patients diagnosed with wild-type transthyretin cardiac amyloidosis are elderly patients, particularly uh, the prevalence increases sharply after 75 years of age, this is a call uh, for physicians, geriatricians, cardiologists, and internal medicine specialists to start thinking about uh, cardiac amyloidosis whenever red flags are present meaning that whenever there is a suspicion that this disease may exist, patients should be referred to tertiary care clinics in order to reach a faster diagnosis and then have more appropriate care. Among the most important red flags for the uh, diagnosis of uh, wild-type transthyretin cardiac amyloidosis, we can uh, see extracardiac patterns such as bilateral carpal tunnel syndrome or ruptured biceps tendon bilateral or single. Among the cardiac phenotypes, we can see on AKG cellular infarct patterns, low or decreased QRS voltages to degree of LV thickness, that is the left ventricular interventricular septal thickness, or among the laboratory data, a disproportionately elevated NT pro BMP levels, uh, disproportionately higher to the degree of heart failure. Making an earlier diagnosis means that patients can be referred to tertiary care institutions or centers where, and access detailed specific disease modifying therapies earlier, potentially being able to modify their degree of disease progression and potentially prognosis. Thank you very much for your attention and I hope you'll enjoy reading this article, which will be published on the August issue of the Mayo Clinic Proceedings, and I hope you will find it interesting. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter, 
More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.